Hello friends, now we will see the coagulates and anticoagulants. The learning outcome for this uh, chapter is that on completion of these, these sessions, the learners will be able to uh, define and describe the blood coagulation means what and anticoagulant pathway means what. Then they will be able to describe the various anticoagulant drugs. They can be described various anticoagulant drugs and their mechanism of action. Mechanism of action, how the coagulants and anticoagulant drugs works, and also their clinical applications. So, what is the blood coagulations and anticoagulations? So, the blood coagulation is nothing but a natural sequence of a blooding hemostasis when there is a uh, oozing of the blood that can be stopped by giving the uh, by uh, coagulation mechanism so this coagulation typically involved the two pathway that is uh, uh, activation pathway it is also called as an intrinsic pathway and a tissue pathway that is called as an extrinsic pathway so this ultimately you have already in detail in this uh, we have seen in the uh, subject APHE and both these combine together to form a uh, common pathway where there is a formation of a fibrin thread and fibrin mesh which is then stabilized to form a clot. Now when there is a certain disorder there is a modification in the, this coagulation or anticoagulation pathway. So there is a, this, this uh, first two steps we said there is a coagulation pathway so along with that there is also an anticoagulant pathway and if something happens if disturbance is there then it is leading to the modification in this pathway. So this modification in the pathway uh, might be the fibrinolysis platelet uh, leading to the fibrinolysis platelet aggregations and these are happening due to certain kind of a disorders like myocardial infarction, cerebral stroke or venous thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, cardiac surgeries. So these are the some conditions myocardial infarction, cerebral stroke or cardiac surgery. Due to that there is an alteration in these pathways, coagulation, anticoagulation pathway, which is leading to the fibrin, uh, fibrinolysis, platelet aggregation and all these things. There is also an antithrombin mechanism which is present inside our body. Thrombin is a uh, essential protein, we'd say, which converts the fibrinogen to the fibrin and uh, formation of a mesh. So this antithrombin is nothing but an anticoagulant endogenously present inside our body. And it is a serine protease inhibitor which breaks these uh, uh, fibrin uh, uh, mesh which inhibit the coagulation pathway. Now there is an another mechanism which is called as a fibrinolysis. So first is a coagulation, antithrombin is anticoagulant and third mechanism is fibrinolysis. The already formed clot will be dissolved. So process where the fibrin clot, clot which is formed is digested or fibrin specific protease um, uh, type of compounds these are which are present in our body. Now there is a one again one uh, another mechanism which is present which is also called as disseminated intramuscular clotting or alter coagulation and fibrinolytic system which is happening specifically whenever there is a massive tissue injury or there is a carcinoma or bacterial sepsis. So this is also called as a uh, a big kind of a coagulation which is taken place, a large amount of a coagulation which is taken place. So these are the conditions where the massive tissue injury, malignancy or bacterial sepsis happen and this is called as a disseminated intramuscular clotting. Now heparin, it is one of the anticoagulant drug. Uh, this drug is highly negatively charged and sulfated uh, mucopolysaccharide uh, stored in a, a secretory granules of the mast cell in our body. Uh, these are having the very high molecular weight, uh, almost all are about 5 to 30,000. The mechanism of this uh, heparin uh, depends upon the endogenous anticoagulant which is present inside our body. Uh, these are the protease inhibitor and antithrombin, that is serine protease inhibitor. So it also inactivate the various factors which are 13 from the 13 universal factors, specifically 9A, 10A, uh, 12A or 2A. So these factors are inhibited by the inhibiting, uh, heparin and uh, work as an uh, anticoagulant. It inhibits the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin by inhibiting the thrombin. We are knowing very well in common pathway. Thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin. So formation of fibrinogen to fibrin it is done by the thrombin and it inhibits the thrombin and by that way it stops the conversion of fibrinogen to a fibrin network. Uh, and by that way it is also acting. 
it did also inhibit the 10a uh, both in intrinsic and extrinsic pathway the factor 10a so that will be inhibited uh, from the intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathway it also uh, accelerate these reactions thousand time more so due to its positive charge it is a very highly effective thousand time more acceleration in the reactions and due to that uh, very extensive effect we are getting out of it it is one of the very large molecular size and anionic structure so therefore they are not absorbed from gastrointestinal tract and they are specifically given by the parenteral route of administration so heparin are always given by the parenteral route of administration no oral route of administration is there so the half life of heparin is around, was around one to two hour uh, they are used as a prophylaxis and also in the treatment of thromboembolism that is clot which is uh, uh, inside the blood vessels then pulmonary embolism peripheral arterial embolism and post operative thrombosis so these are the conditions where the heparin is specifically given as an uh, anticoagulant uh, the clot which is in the pulmonary region or in the deep arteries or in the veins or in after post operative if something happens then these drugs are given so the adverse effect of these heparin kind of compounds is that they ultimately lead to the uh, bleeding peptic ulceration or malignancy if uh, prolonged for the very large uh, for very large time if they are given they will lead to these conditions next category of drug is direct thrombin inhibitors so these are the drugs which uh, directly inhibit the thrombin uh, which is necessary for the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin so they drug, these drugs act as an antithrombin bind uh, both at the catalytic uh, active site and the substrate site hyuridine is the reversible thrombin inhibitor uh, lipiridine is a dna recombinant drug and bivalirudine is the synthetic analog so these are the various kind of a drugs uh, one which is uh, directly acting uh, irreversibly acting dna recombinant or synthetic uh, analogs so another compound is ergotrobin which is the l serine derivative amongst them this uh, bilaviridine is the short half life drug and therefore it is also used in the unstable angina uh, so whenever there is an unstable angina for whenever the drug requirement is a very for the very short duration of time at that time this drug is given so the another drug is that a l serine uh, l arginine uh, analog ergotrobin it is a, a reversible selective inhibitor of the thrombin and it is used as a prophylaxis uh, for the treatment of the uh, 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 it is used as a prophylaxis for the thrombin uh, thrombosis whenever we are knowing that thrombosis can happen at that time the for the prophylaxis it can be given so another kind of a drug which is uh, a not listed in above uh, danaparad it is a mixture of a non heparin uh, glycosamine glycans so it is a mixture actually uh, non heparin glycosamine glycans and used for the heparin induced thrombocytopenia so typically if the heparin is given for the longer duration of time and it is causing the uh, thrombocytopenia then this kind of a drug is given so now these are the selective uh, the, how they are acting they are selectively inhibit the uh, factor 10a mediated antithrombins so this is what the mechanism of it now next category is the oral anticoagulant and this type of a typical type of category of the drug is typically working through the vitamin a uh, sorry vitamin k uh, it is also called as a clotting vitamin so oral anticoagulants are antagonist of vitamin k uh, this vitamin k which is essential for the synthesis of various factors uh, from the blood cascade mechanism that is uh, factor 2 7 then 9 and 10 and uh, these are also necessary for the synthesis of anticoagulant protein c and s in the liver so these are the factors which are uh, uh, synthesized with the help of vitamin k therefore vitamin k is also known as a uh, clotting vitamin so warfarin is the drug uh, which act on the carboxylation pathway of this synthesis whenever there is a synthesis of these various proteins coagulation proteins uh, there is a carboxylation pathway and this carboxylation uh, warfarin act on this carboxylation pathway and thereby it act as an anticoagulant generally they are given as a sodium salt these are absorbed by git mucosa 
100% is a bioavailability, but 99% is the plasma protein binding. These are the typical feature of the uh, warfarin, half-life 36 hours, and it is available as a racemic mixture. Amongst that, R isomer is weak, whereas a S isomer is very potent. So typically, it is 100% bioavailability, 99% plasma protein binding, and 36 of the half-life. This is making a warfarin a very typical kind of a drug. And uh, this is used specifically in thromboembolism, pulmonary embolism, and arterial fibrillation. The typical side effect of warfarin is that it crosses the placental barrier and therefore they causes the hemorrhagic disorder and hence it is contraindicated in a pregnancy conditions. These drugs, warfarin, are also having the property of enzyme induction. It decreases the plasma protein binding of other drugs. They have the synergistic effect along with the oral uh, anticoagulants and platelet, uh, antiplatelet drugs like uh, vitamin K antagonists. So this typical enzyme due to this in enzyme induction property. And there is one serious uh, drug interaction with NSAID drug that they are displaced by uh, phenylbutazone. And this is one of the typical and most dangerous kind of drug interaction because they are extensively bound to the plasma protein binding, uh, plasma protein that is 99%. And even if a very small fraction is displaced by uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory like phenylbutazone, a very large amount of drug is uh, released inside the blood and they are giving a very uh, sharp rise in the concentration and giving you the bleeding tendency. So, therefore, these kind of a drug, warfarin kind of a drug, requires the drug monitoring or continuous whenever they are given, they require the drug monitoring. So this is all, uh, all about the coagulants and anticoagulants. Uh, if you have any kind of a difficulty, you can contact me on these numbers and email ID. Thank you. Thank you very much.